Dave Schuster's lab. Behind me, you can see four dilution refrigerators all operating. That is, the noise that you hear is pulse tubes operating to keep these fridges close to zero degrees Kelvin. Uh, specifically, they're close to about um, 20 uh, millikelvin, which keeps all of the qubits that we have printed in the uh, quantum version. So, uh, let's go into here, and I can show you the experiment that I've been working on. Right now, is I'm taking out one of the chips that I fabricated. Uh, and each one of these chips is technically one of the whole experiments. And I'll talk about what's going on on each of these chips in a bit. But the way that we manufacture these chips is using the nanofabrication facility here at the University of Chicago. The metal that you're seeing on here is niobium. That's the silvery gray material that comprises most of this chip. The gaps that you're seeing in between pretty much allow us to form each of the microwave elements um, that you're seeing. The niobium and aluminum that we use for the qubit circuit both have transition temperatures at 9 and 1 Kelvin respectively. And when I say transition temperatures, I mean the transition temperature at which each of these metals goes from a normal metal to a superconducting metal. Inputting current into the material has no loss, no matter how far that current travels. So I actually use a device similar to this on the top of the um, this uh, little cabinet here, and it just pumps out some static amount of current. That current flows from this device to the top of any one of those dilution refrigerators if you uh, you know put your experiment in there, and that current flows from the top at room temperature, down each stage of the refrigerator, um, where each stage is at a lower and lower temperature, and it makes its way all the way down to one of the lines on those chips. And then it makes its way very close to the qubit, and that proximity of that current to the qubit induces a magnetic field. So it's, it's kind of a strange effect, but we use classical current on the outside of the fridge to tune the transition energy of these qubits on the inside of the fridge. And they're very close, like the spacing between this current and the qubit is on the order of four microns. That's, that's how close these, these elements are, and that's like a, that's a classical source of current from the outside of the fridge, tuning the magnetic field that, that is an inherently very quantum discrete object. Just still kind of nuts when you think about it. Um, but in order to make that happen, um, we put each of these um, chips inside mounted IBM board caps uh, and mount those caps to um, boards like this. Each of these cables. Um, run out of several layers of shielding, like this, uh, and these SMA wires connect to here, and we place each of these boards on the inside of these layers of shielding, and these wires connect to the base stage of the refrigerator. And when we put our chips in here and connect these wires out to these SMA cables into the fridge, this essentially allows us to interface with our quantum experiments classically at kind of room temperature out here, but then into the fridge at cryogenic temperatures at you know, 20 millikelvin or so, with these guys mounted all the way on the inside of several layers of shielding. So, so in this refrigerator, um, we're downstairs now from the main lab, uh, and we've taken apart this adsorption refrigerator, which gets down to about 850 millikelvin, um, which is just past the transition temperature for aluminum which means the qubits that we put in here, made of aluminum, are just past the point where they turn into uh, kind of well-behaved quantum qubits. Um, so when they're placed in this refrigerator, uh, you can actually use this to do pretty good quick debugging for um, 
you know, uh, proposed designs or proposed experiments. So my sample is actually in here right now, and you can see attached to the base plate, which is the coldest object in this fridge uh, when running, uh, there is a copper post coming from the bottom carrying that cold uh, base plate temperature up to the uh, IBM board where my chip is mounted inside and uh, you know wire bound wire bond and mounted and um, essentially uh, connected to these uh, SMA traces coming off of the board um, I have a solenoid connected on the top here which means the global magnetic field coming from the solenoid uh, talks to all of the qubits on the surface of my chip. So in this case, I have neglected to hook up basically individual tuning lines to each of my qubits, instead choosing to tune all of them at the same time with one solenoid for debugging purposes. Um, the rest of this is basically just um, filtering um, microwave electronics to make sure that the noise coming from um, our experimental measuring apparatus and uh, you know, thermal uh, effects from uh, higher temperature stages of the fridge, such as this top stage or this uh, I think 100 millikelvin stage, um, do not actually influence the rest of our experiment down here. Um, one such circuit element is a circulator, which is based on the back here, which is a, a three-port element. If you put in power on one end, it comes out on the other end and not the third end putting power in on this end flows it out the third port and not on any of the other ports, and the third port flows out the first port. So if you're putting in power here, you can put your measurement apparatus here, and then the measurement signal comes out here, and your output is here, and that prevents noise coming in on the wrong directions, such as if noise came back on the output line, it would actually flow to the input line and not to your sample. So devices like that can be used to kind of help isolate and clean up uh, microwave signals that you use to kind of um, measure what is happening with your qubits. And technologies like that, plus the readout resonator that we discussed before, have kind of increased the qubit lifetimes um, uh, that, that we see from uh, you know, the, the tens of nanoseconds to uh, what, what we're seeing now, which is the, the hundreds of microseconds. And you know, who knows where we'll be going soon. Thank you.